At the moment, it's extremely fun. <laughs> so I can only say it helps me a lot. And just today, I was working on a concept and the speed uh, in which uh, you can create ideas is astounding. So um, for example, the brainstorming session, now you have basically like concept art in real time. And uh, it's not just images, it's also music, it's text. I think that it can be a huge distraction. If you're not really focused on one idea, if you're just kind of playing with it and uh, not really having an idea of where you want it to go to, I mean, because it can take you all over the place. And I know for a fact I could, I easily can sit there for five hours and have nothing. It can be a distraction though, because as I mentioned before, every new idea, every new concept can be a rabbit hole, can be something you want to explore for hours, for days, for weeks even. It's actually creating a lot of jobs. I'm seeing so much real world stuff from people that it's like a power shift. It should be considered as something that enhances people, enhances the worker, enhances the artist. It, it helps me as an artist uh, to visualize things that I have in my mind. As a photog photographer, I'm always kind of exploring different perspectives and, and angles. I'm using different light and different techniques to kind of get what I want out of photography. AI helps draw out my imagination a little bit. And I see things that AI helps me create or help uh, it, that is created through AI that really help me visualize my own creativity. And especially with text, you can just generate like 10 blog ideas. You can visualize them with images. And then after that, you can uh, record a video, just a rough cut basically with all the ums and as and all the pauses and ingest this in a video AI system and automatically shorten all the pauses. So you have in a fraction of the time uh, which you needed before, the video, images and text and transcription. So to your question, it helps. <laughs> For every one angry person, there's probably 10 people that are loving it and enjoying it. The people that are upset are much louder and they are able to victimize there's the situation and I, I, you know, I just don't want to be insensitive to their situation, but at the same time, it's like, this is the purpose of technology, you know, is to make things more efficient, make our jobs easier, make tasks that take a long time faster. And you should take advantage of that. So why would you deny yourself power? This technology is available to everyone. I think mid journey is at the forefront of all of this uh, because it's just the more aesthetic text to image platform in my opinion and they just released version 4 and if you were using midjourney at all before now you can i mean you can see night and day because they still have the previous versions you can use the previous versions night and day how much more powerful it's gotten before you couldn't even create animals and now it's just like flawless, perfect, beautiful horses, jaguars, elephants, whatever you want. You know, it's just, it's amazing how far this technology has come. The danger for AI generated content for creators um, is very apparent uh, when I talk to my illustrator friend, for example. I'm not an illustrator, I'm a photographer and filmmaker. And he, uh, the first reaction uh, of him when he saw these tools was he said, I was depressed for three days straight. And this is a very emotional reaction and I can relate to that because he felt like all the training he had for 20 years, he's like a very, very good painter and illustrator, maybe obsolete or at least uh, kind of uh, mass marketed uh, if everybody and your mother can use these tools. And I think in part, he is right. This will happen and already happens. I know of people who say, 
why should I pay an artist to create concept art, especially concept art, um, and rough, uh, rough drawings if I can use it basically for free and get 80%, 80, 80 where I want to, want to go. So this is a real danger, like breaking down of uh, a real um, economy, the artist economy. I have a friend that is a graphic designer and he has a lot of fear built around it because he's like, you know, there goes my job. You know, some, some, some dude in the middle of the US can do exactly what I'm doing through AI and I'm becoming obsolete. You type what you want to see and it shows it to you. And I do think that that's art. A lot of people are arguing about this still to this day, saying it's not art because it wasn't created manually by, <laughs> by a brush or a pencil or uh, whatever. I, you know, I just don't, I don't see the reasoning behind that um, because they, they want to say that a machine made it and it wasn't created by a human. Well, you can use something called a camera that is a machine to create photographs, which are definitely art. And we don't have a problem with that anymore. And you know, back then when the camera first came out, there were French philosophers saying, this is going to be the death of art as we know it. Um, every artist is going to be out of a job. I think that that same kind of feeling was present when Photoshop first came out. You know, and the same thing with Lightroom. I also think that that fear that people are feeling is is natural, it's normal, it's new technology, it's coming, it's coming out and it's coming out fast. I think the whole thing um, needs to be transparent. It's all about transparency. The discussion about the models, for example, that uh, the models were trained on copyrighted images by other artists. It's true, in part, and it's a problem. It's a big problem. So um, the companies behind that, for example, for Midjourney, they don't uh, release the method or the, all, all the database which they use because it's like a secret recipe, like a Coca-Cola recipe, they say. But for me, I think you can only solve this with, with transparency. The main point of issue that they have is that the training data is taking from billions, millions and billions of images online, and that includes artwork. And they're saying uh, these machines are plagiarizing or over copyrighted material. But if you look into it and study it, you'll realize it'll click like, oh, that's crazy. Like. This is wizardry. Like these guys are so smart to have come up with this. And literally all it is, is the machine is just looking at pictures and learning what it is. It's not copying anything. You know what? It can't, these, th this technology can't copy. It's, it, the programming actually prevents it from ever making the same image twice, let alone recreating another image. So it's always original. The second part of it, which is uh, the consent. They're saying, oh, nobody consented to having the machine look at their artwork. And I, I beg to differ because um, if you're online and you're using Google, Apple, Facebook, all these platforms to upload your images, there's this little, there's this license agreement that you have to go down and scroll through and you, you click, I agree. So it's like, yeah, you did consent to it, actually. And I'm not saying that I agree with that or that's a good thing or whatever. I'm just saying this argument that they're posing has been around for way before AI ever came on the scene. There's a large learning curve to it. You know, it reminds me of when I first started to try to learn Photoshop <laughs> by myself. And it's like, or, you know, you went to the bookstore and got a book that was like this thick on how to, how to do Photoshop. And it's like, oh my God, this is crazy. And AI is in that early stage where it's not very user friendly. If you, you know, it takes time to learn. This next year will be even more, uh, more of a huge year for AI. As better technology comes out, maybe there will be better software coming out that'll be easier to use. It'll be uh, more streamlined. It's articulation. It's all about fine tuning, just the fine details. So what I'd like to see is even more hands-on um, 
particulars, like where Well, we all know about the hands, like it's creating, you know, way too many fingers and things like that. That'll, that'll go away eventually. But like, let's say I made a Christmas tree and the star on top of the tree, like if here's the tree and here's the star, the star is over here. So like, I can't fix that. So like, that's what I feel like eventually we'll be able to go in and we'll be able, because it's multimodal software. We just need to make it even more multimodal, which means even more human interaction. So it'll reach a point where we're interacting with the AI as though it's a person. Like I'm talking to you right now and we'll be able to say, hey, you see this star right here that you made? It's way off. I want you to move the star over here and be like, okay, I can do that. And so, once it reaches that point, I mean, the sky's the limit. There'll be nothing that we won't be able to create. One main thing I would recommend uh, to everybody, play, play, play. Uh, experiment with, with the things because in the playing, you will find out stuff you couldn't have found out if you just thought about it. I think you should read about it. I think you should learn about what this tool is. It's not going away. It's only going to get better. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, my advice is to get ahead of it somehow. To educate yourself, honestly, the first step, well, there's, there's five stages of grief, right? So the first is denial, the most predictive of all human responses. And then after the denial, there's anger. And then after anger, there's bargaining. And after bargaining, there's, um, depression. And I think we're entering into the depression part. I don't think it's funny. I just think it's, it's, we know this, we, we've been through this. So I'm, I'm not surprised by it. And once we've gotten through the depression, they can finally accept it and adapt to it. You have to pay attention to how your seed phrase is and how it's formed. Uh, pay attention to the other artists and see how they're doing it. A lot of people are doing mixed uh, AI with Lightroom or Photoshop to complete it. All of the thoughts that we have originate with us. And it's the same for an artist too. So like their thoughts that originate with them, they just have an ability to translate those thoughts into form, bringing that vision into form where other people might not. And this technology gives that to you. I don't know why people would be against that. It's like the most powerful form of human freedom of expression that has ever been created. And isn't that kind of what being an artist is all about? It's also important to see what advertisers are doing with, uh, with AI. Um, and that's kind of keeping ahead of the curve and seeing how other people are using this technology to enhance their own work. That's very important. If you don't have the mindset to approach new things fearlessly, you will get left behind in this new world. This will become a problem. I'm <laughs> unfortunately very sure that the discussion here, the public one, will again be fear dominated. Constructivism will not dominate the discussion, I fear. Um, but uh, I wish it would, because if you play with this, as I mentioned before, you know the limits and the opportunities of these technologies much better if you just sit there and say, I don't want this. If you have an imagination and you, there's something that you want to visualize and, you're, and you maybe you can't draw or paint, maybe AI is the perfect escape for you to be able to help you build that. Maybe just try it that's another thing a lot of the people they don't they've never tried it or they just don't they don't get it they just think i'm pushing a button and it's creating award-winning art and that's that's not it either like it takes it does take skill to create a prompt and you know what like if you are an established artist i highly recommend that you do use artificial intelligence text to image 
uh, software because you'll be really good at it. It will make your life better.